Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi. I am here to talk about something really cool and something that Proxmox doesn't really... Well, let's just say I haven't seen any real verbiage on it. Doesn't mean I'm breaking anything. It just says I'm stretching the rules a little bit, shall we say. So as you already know, I've been working on a mini cluster PC and I've done videos on its design and its initial implementation and its de development and the completion of the cluster with all five nodes, the primary and four nodes. And I will show you what that looks like here in a second. This is it right here. There are the five nodes. They have not been reconfigured to be rack mountable yet, but I have finally gotten the last of the ingredients for that. Here are the drive caddies. Here are the team group one terabyte drives. This is important. I understand that these already have everything they need. They don't require anything else, storage capacity wise. They have fully booted and they have their local M.2 style 128 gig bootables on board already, so they're ready to go. But obviously, unless you have NFS storage, you know, 128 gigs doesn't go very far, right? Just enough to boot the operating system and get you where you need to be. So, with that being the case, now it's time to cheat. So here I have five terabytes of SSD capacity and a 2.5 inch standard SATA interface. And with that being said, here I also have the bridge interfaces for the actual units themselves. And this is where we would set them up and connect them in such a way so that we can get them to uh, sit inside the bay. Correctly that is of course. And so what we'll do here in a second is I will take this node right here and it's not powered up at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off to show you what it looks like inside. Come on, let it go. All right, so here is the environment as you can see and this little guy here he is going to go into that configuration slot right there and he'll slide into place now first I want to do is to make sure I've made it correctly it appears to be proper uh, uh, nope it is not correct let me correct that I have to flip it panel down not panel up there we go and then at that point stage Oh, I did it wrong again. I apologize. Yeah. And backwards. And backwards. Yes, yeah, so with this particular type of cat caddy design, you can do that, by the way. So you put that guy in there, and he'll slide right in. And that's it. So with that being the case, and always make sure that your lock case is secure, this node is done. And it now has 1.128 terabyte capacity uh, in two tiers. Two tiers means basically in a nutshell that it is um, both SSD boot, which has available resources, which yes, you can use, and also um, the localized boot, which is the one terabyte SATA connection which is different than the M.2 so performance wise that's what really matters is the 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 nature between the two because SSD SATA is slightly slower than um, the M.2 standard so because of that factor you have an ability to tier it now what is tiering well, tiering is basically, in a nutshell, let's see, that's secure, where you have different classifications of performance storage in your environment. Your slowest storage, of course, is always going to be remote 7200 7, RPM SATA disks sitting on some type of NAS device. So, unfortunately, I hate to say this, guys, but if you have... A system out there that is um, a little NAS box and you've got a fill full of 7200 RPM 4 terabyte drives 
and you think, oh, I can do high performance running on that for on that standing, uh, the answer is no, you can't. Why? Two reasons. One, you're networking it. That's the first thing. And two, unless you've got cash, that's I basically means unless you're using memory inside your NAS head and not using technically the, the hard drives themselves just yet, uh, that write and read speed is going to be pretty, pretty doggone slow, actually. Pretty sad. Um, but it's more than enough speed for doing backups and low-end, what we call low-hanging low fruit style footprints. So with that being said, and understanding that as part of the equation, um, you can use that storage based on tiers. Now, here's where a poor man or a poor woman, I want to be agnostic as possible, can get away with murder when it comes to storage. You can take your really old hard disks, you can put them in a NAS, and you can use NFS and use that the slow speed drives for your initiate requirement, and that would be, I'd say, backups, right? That would be the easy one, right? And it's perfect. I mean, the 7200 RPM drives are, is perfect. And you can use, also, for your test and dev, 7200 RPM drives in a NAS that's using NFS for its protocol. Uh, and that would allow you to basically uh, cheat and, you know, do some low-end testing on some fairly sluggish but functional storage capacity, right? So with that being said, the only thing left to address is understanding how do you transition these on a Proxmox um, and can you do it automatically? Well, the answer to that question is no, you can't. It has to be managed by, it has, it has to be a manual process, that's the correct term. And, um, but that doesn't mean it's not usable. Why? Because of the fact that the Proxmox and its storage provision, like I showed you in my previous cluster configuration, has basically slow disks for backups and moderate disks for, you know, any type of play testing. And my high-end disk, which you're seeing right now, which is what I'm installing right now, is only focused on the ability of, of getting um, that performance level to run. Now I got a problem here, so I'll have to investigate. But let me check here and see what's going on. Hmm. Okay, I think we got ourselves fixed here. So I got the last five terabyte drive in, and I'll resume with what we were discussing. And that was how do you effectively use different tiers of performance disk on a platform. For instance, instead of using the 128 gig M.2 standard cards, which we have on board, which by the way look like something like this, as you can see here, that you could put in a one terabyte and M.2 standard drive in here instead and have the ultimate high performance capacity. And you can put some of your local VMs on that. Then you use the SATA disk I just put in as your second tier performance for your test and dev. And then you use the NFS to do what you call enterprise VM sharing. In other words, to give you the transition ability to move from one node, as you can see here, to the next node, right? And that gives the ability for the systems to transition between nodes in the clear and function like they are supposed to. So with that being said, as I am in the process now of rebuilding this real quick, I'll, let me adjust the camera here for you. I am bringing that very structure into play right now and getting it to a point where I'll be able to do three levels of storage and two types of VM instances. And first things first, understand the two types of VM instances are the local capacity instances and then the second tier, which is distributed cluster VM instances, and that's basically where you have a system that is um, acting as strictly local testing because you got to do something super fast, 
or you can choose to use your NFS capacity out there for your VM instances and that would give you the ability to transition it from this node to from this node down to this node or from this node down to the bottom node and tr you move them up and down and or you can choose to use them as a reserve state so that you keep all of your high performance capacity uh, and high performance uh, storage in the clear for doing the real basic work and that being the case um, and I think I just started this up I have to stop it make sure everything is stopped correctly are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So I'm going to bring him up. Bring him up. Bring him up. Bring him up. And I'm not seeing what I need to see. So I'm going to disconnect these guys. There we go. And we're just going to bring one of them up right now. And we'll have to post to what's called diagnostic state because the bottom one is my cluster and these four are our workable nodes. But this is a data center all by itself. It can do the Docker developments, it can do DevOps, it can do everything. And I'll show you also later how we can turn around and cheat to use these guys as a fourth tier of capacity on USB 3.0. So, when we're looking at this, we're going to have these M.2s, we have SSD SATA, we will have USB 3.0 spinning disk, and we'll have NFS spinning disk. And that, to me, is Enterprise. I have all the key requirements I need to do almost anything in Enterprise I want, just with this small little unit. So this is Brad Dyke signing off. Uh, God bless everybody. I hope you have a great week, and I'll let you go. You take care. Bye-bye.